Welcome to Bible 360 Philemon. Philemon is the shortest book in the Bible, but it's an eye-opening book that shows us a personal example of what the early community of Jesus looked like in the Roman Empire. Unlike most of Pauline's letters, this is a letter addressed to an individual Christian, a wealthy landowner named Philemon. Like many landowners of the time, Philemon had servants, or at least he had one servant by the name of Onesimus. Now, slavery was a widespread practice in the ancient world. We might question why God, or Paul or Jesus for that matter, don't condemn slavery more roundly. However, in those those days, the widespread abolition of slavery was not even a concept that most people had thought of. More importantly, Paul's primary purpose was to see the gospel of Jesus spread. The goal of the gospel was much more important than any political, social, or economic goal to the Christian church. As Paul says, I consider everything trash compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Now, I can't expect anyone who doesn't know Jesus to grasp that. However, for those of us who do know Christ, this is a reminder that He is our ultimate good, and He we we can depend upon to bring the necessary changes to this world, some now, some not till eternity. Nevertheless, Paul does say elsewhere that those who can get their freedom should do so. He assumes freedom is a good thing, as does our Savior. And the church is concerned for impartiality, for sharing goods with one another, and many examples of caring for the disadvantaged and hurting should clearly demonstrate that Christianity stands for compassion and concern for others, regardless of their status, ethnicity, or any other way that human beings divide themselves up. What's more, if you understand the story of these three men, you'll see that Onesimus is valued. You see, uh, Onesimus was a runaway slave, and this was a crime taken very seriously by Rome. Philemon could have beaten Onesimus or branded him, whipped him, even crucified him. When he comes to Paul, Paul and Paul cares for him without turning him in, Paul could easily also be charged with aiding, abetting, and abetting a fugitive, and likewise severely punished for messing with the business of Philemon. In the eyes of the law and society, Paul was clearly out of bounds. Yet Paul does absolutely everything in his considerable persuasive powers to convince Philemon to be reconciled and to be made brothers with his with Onesimus. Paul greets Philemon in the church that meets in his house, but he introduces himself as a prisoner and as a worker. Now, in most of his letters, Paul calls himself at the beginning an apostle, but in this case, he doesn't bring up his status or position. Paul's highlighting that in the eyes of society and Roman law, he is currently among the lowest. However, Paul knows and mentions that Philemon values and appreciates Paul, despite the world's low regard for him. Furthermore, Paul knows of Philemon's love and devotion, which he has already personally experienced and appreciated. Because of these things, Paul entreats Onesimus, not on the basis of rights or laws, but on the basis of Christian love, to gladly welcome back Onesimus and to treat him as a brother, not as property or someone to be punished. Philemon may have worried about how this was all going to look, as he's probably expected to punish Onesimus, and might even endure ridicule for failing to do so. But Paul says, look, I was weak, yet you respect and love me. Paul does not seek to flip things around and simply impose his will on Philemon, regarding his treatment of Onesimus. Rather, Paul wants the love of Christ to voluntarily permeate the church from top to bottom. If Philemon is worried about what's good, right, or fair, Paul says, don't worry, I'll make it right. You know what it's like to send a servant to represent you? And, well, accept Onesimus, as if he represents me and as if I represent him. In fact, if he is in your debt, consider it mine to pay. If you have valued me, which Philemon clearly has, then consider my time with Onesimus as a way you were sharing and helping me. By lending me Onesimus, who was a real help to me, Paul says, you have become my partner in sharing the gospel. But that's not all. The two of you have become partners as well. In fact, that's why we're here. Within the economy of the church, we are all servants of Christ. Consider how God has marvelously transformed this frustration and enmity into a potentially wonderful gift. I was an old man thrown into prison, and Onesimus helped me, and through him you too have helped me. You have another opportunity to help me by forgiving this man's debt to you. And in so doing, you will have lost a servant, yes, but you will have gained a brother. Paul closes the letter by saying that he is confident that given time, Philemon Philemon will see that this is good and will lift up the church. What's more, Paul says he's looking forward to visiting his friend again, if permitted by his freedom. He also sends greetings from his fellow workers to Philemon and the church. Paul's letter to Philemon focuses not on status, but on Christ and the relationship between brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul could, says that he could essentially order Philemon to do what he wants, but that's not his wish. Rather, he implores that Philemon would freely choose to forgive this man who had been an important servant 
an asset to Philemon's household. He depends upon the gospel convincing Philemon to do what is right. Paul also demonstrates the values of Christ in the way he approaches this troublesome situation. He advocates for the weaker brother, Onesimus. Uh, perhaps Onesimus had cheated Philemon, or perhaps Philemon had oppressed Onesimus. It doesn't really matter in Paul's eyes, because what matters is being reconciled in Christ. End goal is not to punish either party or to stand upon rights, but rather to be reconciled to one another. Paul doesn't stand on his own rights, although he could, and he discourages others from doing the same. Onesimus is in a terribly vulnerable state by returning to a man who could kill him, and Philemon is vulnerable too for his reputation and loss of assets. But it's exactly in embracing the gospel and surrendering our own rights and well-being that we can provide such a wonderful, shining example of the power of the gospel to overcome any other power or privilege in this world. Just as Jesus gave up his rights and reconciled us to God, so we too can experience and encourage reconciliation among brothers and sisters in Christ.